morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. A few years ago, my longtime friend Dr. Michael Johnson told me a spellbinding story about a good friend of his and a very special horse. Michael, the calf roping psychologist's friend, was Michael Cotter from Minnesota. And uh, Michael Johnson, the doctor, wrote a monthly column called Throwing My Loop in a bunch of agricultural newspapers, and he included the story that his friend Michael Cotter had told him in one of his columns. He handed me a copy, and he said, Hey, Hugh, here's something y'all can read on your flight back to Canada. Well, that story kept my attention, and it was so riveting, I read it again. And I thought there's got to be a way to share this with you folks who join us here every week. Well, this week, in Michael Johnson's unique delivery, you'll hear the story of the horse called Thunder. One day, years later, however, Thunder's little problem came sharply into focus and created an additional problem that would cause Michael's life to hang in the balance. And boy, I am sure glad that Baxter Black's cowboy commentary this week is not a video. As he rode off, he returned to me the backward glance I gave him. I lay there really not quite sure if he was him or me. It's a cowboy ghost story, and you might want to listen, not want to listen to it, just before you go to bed. And uh, the Rangeland News has everything from cattle being victims of a hurricane to where next year's steer prices might be increased supplies we see cattle prices basically leveling off to just a slight decline a master reciter in the cowboy poetry spotlight this week montana rancher jim hamilton but now his wife's passed away the children all grown it's lonesome as heck on that ranch all alone yeah a rancher decides finally to go to his 50th class reunion hoping to reconnect with a girl he knew way back in junior high school on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear, horse training file, more observations on the subtle things that good horsemen do that you can really see in the way their horses connect to them. So settle back, turn up the radio, get ready for a masterful telling of a heartwarming story. First, though, the good Texas cowboy singer, R.J. Vandegrift. <laughs> Sit a brawn before he learned to walk. He could swear like a pacero before he knew how to talk. When he steps up in the stirrup, he gets the urge to roam. He's a son of the Lone Star, he's cowboy to the bone. Cowboy to the bone. He could string them strays together. Head him up and move him out In all kinds of weather That's what he's all about He can take them up and down the trail And back where they belong Get along, you little doggies He's cowboy to the bone Cowboy to the bone He can ride a bull in Cheyenne And still bring it home He can jump on a wild wall And ride it all day long He's at home in the saddle He's cowboy to the bone Cowboy to the bone And throw a running steer He can whip his weight in wildcats Shotgun tall boy beers He can run with the wild bunch Or kick it on his own He's full of life on Saturday night Cowboy to the bone Cowboy to the bone He can ride a bull in Cheyenne And drive home all night long He can be there and still bring it home He can jump on a wild one And ride it all day long He's at home in the 
saddle He's cowboy to the bone Cowboy to the bone He's a son of the Lone Star He's cowboy to the bone The calf roping psychologist, Dr. Michael Johnson's friend and mentor from Minnesota, Michael Cotter, related an experience from his younger days to him that really captivated the roping psychologist, and the story begins at a horse auction in Minnesota. I always dreamed of owning a horse, and I always knew just how he would look. He'd be a big black horse that could run like the wind. He smiled and shook his head. Imagine my excitement when one day my dad came home and announced we would be traveling to the sale barn the next day to purchase my very own horse. I couldn't believe it, said Michael. We were up long before dawn that next morning, and after hitching the big draft horses to the wagon, we headed into town. I was so excited I could hardly stay in my skin, he laughed. Arriving at the sale barn, the 12-year-old jumped from the wagon and scurried up the side of the fence where the horses were corralled. His eyes peered over the last high board, fully expecting to see the black standing proud, and what he saw filled him with revulsion and a wave of nausea. The horses were hollow-eyed ghosts, with skeletal structures clearly showing through sagging skin, hanging on jagged bones. Pathetic creatures dying from starvation. The horses, so desperate for food, had eaten the tails and manes from their companions. His dad sighed and said, I I, I didn't know, Michael. The cowboys who brought these horses in rounded up these wild mustangs in Nevada and Wyoming, and they shipped them by rail car, and the horses have had nothing to eat for days. And while I don't approve, son, this depression that we're living in causes men to do desperate things. Michael couldn't bring himself to look at the animals again, He sat in the wagon with his head down, sick at heart, waiting on his father to come so they could leave this dreadful place. And suddenly, to his dismay, he saw his dad talking to one of the cowboys who had captured the starving horses. He groaned inwardly as the cowboy stepped down from his mount and exchanged his reins for money his father was handing over. Michael's dad had bought the cowboy's horse. The Mustang his dad bought didn't quite look as bad as the other nightmarish creatures, but that wasn't saying much. Michael said nothing on the long ride home. The shadow of the proud black the youngster had hoped for walked quietly behind the wagon, his head hanging low. His dad tried a couple of times to lighten the boy's spirit. You never know, son, he said. We can feed him and take care of him. Sweet feed and good care do wonders for all sorts of God's creatures. Let's give him a chance. This thing walking behind the cotter wagon. Sure enough, on the way home, neighbor's kids pointed and laughed at the apparition following the wagon, and Michael's spirits sank even more. He'd been so excited just hours before, he'd even picked a name for the horse he thought would be coming. The name was Thunder. I'll certainly never name this ugly thing Thunder, he said to himself through gritted teeth. We'll pick up the story and have another fitting piece of music when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. A disillusioned young farm boy from Minnesota, his dreams of a powerful black horse falling apart when his dad bought a scrawny, starving Mustang from the horse auction. Dr. Michael Johnson picks up the true story he heard from Michael Cotter. I'll certainly never name this ugly thing Thunder, he said to himself through gritted teeth. Turns out I was wrong about a lot of things that day, Michael said between sips of coffee. My dad was right. We fed the horse and And to everyone's astonishment, the horse responded much better than we expected. He filled out and the scars healed and he grew a new coat of the blackest hair you ever saw in your life. Michael named his new friend Thunder and Thunder became a trusted companion on the family farm and a good working cow pony. The boy and the animal grew close as only men and horses can do after a hard day's work. 
Hidden inside a starving, mistreated Mustang, there was a plow, proud black after all. Except for one small problem. Like most of us, Thunder wasn't perfect. He was certainly a good horse, but he had one flaw. Thunder would not stay ground-tied. Every working cowboy knows the value of an animal that will stand still once you get off of him. And Thunder would not do that. Maybe it was the Mustang in him, Michael said from the other side of the beautiful old weathered kitchen table. You know, they're born to run free. And maybe when we dropped the reins, he felt he could be wild again. He just wouldn't stay ground tied. And Michael explained how this situation wasn't really all that serious because everyone knew of Thunder's tendency to hit the road if left alone. So all the hands on the farm always handed the reins to a partner when they had to dismount from Thunder. One day, years later, however, Thunder's little problem came sharply into focus and created an additional problem that would cause Michael's life to hang in the balance. Well, I went back a ways uh, for this song to the days when Don Edwards was recording for the Warner Western label and included this song in one of those great productions. And this song, I think, will kind of relate to a situation that Michael Cotter and the horse Thunder got into. Deep water, ice, and snow A thousand cattle we had to go To get the cattle to the other side You bet your life we had to ride The railroad was but a mile away But some men and horses would die that day We held the herd on a ridge close by As the north wind blew the snowflakes by we were all chilled, our bodies through, but from cold or fear, nobody knew. We took a smoke and watched it blow. Then slack your cinch, we gotta go. In deep water, ice and snow, with a thousand cattle, we had to go. I pointed the men. We hit her fast, but our luck by now was fading fast. That man was talking from down below as my horse and I was next to go. My horse turned over and I floated free and the waves were so high I couldn't see. Then my horse swam by and I grabbed his tail and he dragged me out of that icy hell. Deep water, ice and snow, and with a thousand cattle we had to go. I'll never forget that terrible day when strong men cried and I heard some pray. We crossed the cattle to the other side just to save a vain man's pride. The hell I've seen was mighty cold. The other kind is worse, or so I'm told. But I hope when I have to go, it ain't in deep water, ice and snow. In deep water, ice and snow, with a thousand cattle, we had to go. To get the cattle to the other side, you bet your life we had to ride. Well, Thunder had turned into a, a savvy, reliable ranch horse, except for one small problem. He never did learn to ground tie. If you got off and dropped the reins on the ground, he was gone. And now the story continues with Dr. Michael Johnson. One day, years later, however, Thunder's little problem came sharply into focus and created an additional problem that would cause Michael's life to hang in the balance. Now entering adulthood, Michael found himself with even more responsibility on the family farm. As a youth, he was always able to pair mamas with their respective baby calves at roundup time. Michael had a sense of cow in him, the old men said. On one particular winter day, he was worried about an older cow that he hadn't seen for several days. Knowing that she was about to calve, he decided to saddle Thunder and ride the farm to find her. As he left the barn on the black, his concerns increased as he saw the blue clouds building in the north. Wouldn't do for a man to get caught out here in one of these Minnesota northers, he thought to himself. 
and he kicked the pony into a trot. He rode for hours, and he found no sign of the mama cow or her baby. And the wind was whipping now, and a few large flakes began to fall, and Michael and Thunder rode on, faster now, each step taking them farther away from the safety of the barn and home. And with his hat pulled down low and collar turned to shield the icy wind, Michael fought to see through the snow coming in full force now. He decided to turn Thunder home and could hardly bring himself to do it. He knew such a decision would sentence the old cow to her death. And then he heard her bellow farther to the north. With Thunder at a dead run, he raced up a small hill, feeling good that he had found the old girl. And as he crested the rise, his hopes fell like the snow around him. And he immediately realized that everybody was in trouble here. The old mother cow had in fact had her baby, and after birth, the little one had slipped from her mama's womb down a slope into a small ravine holding icy water. The baby couldn't get up, and the mama couldn't get her out, and Michael knew that he had two serious problems. One was that he was simply not the kind of man who could let a cow and a calf die in the snow. Call him foolhardy or too soft, call him anything you want, that's just the kind of man he is. The second problem was even worse. He was riding a horse that wouldn't stay ground tied and there was nothing to tie him to out on this open range. Will Michael save the newborn calf or will they all freeze to death and what will Thunder do? Well, the answer will come just a little later. Next, I'm thinking that uh, maybe we should put a disclaimer on what Baxter Black has coming up graphic images, and content that might be disturbing to some listeners. When the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Howdy, friends. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan, and I'll be right back after this. With a little peek at a cowboy ghost story. Your land is a legacy, a challenge from those who tended it before you to build on their foundations. At Corteva AgriScience, we understand what it means to be the stewards of a legacy. We embrace the challenge of building on the foundation of Dow AgroSciences to maintain your trust, to bring new solutions, to help you care for your land. See how we can help build your legacy at rangeandpasture.com. And for our Canadian listeners, just check corteva.ca, the Canadian website. I was sitting by the campfire poking coals amongst the embers. It was late up in the fall, and I was making one last round. The sun had set itself like it was sneaking off to China. Not a single steer I'd seen that day, and not a track was found. But there was something, some sensation out there set my nerves to scritching, and a shiver rolled like itchy fingers crawling up my back. It was thick as muddy water, this vexation I was feeling, and suddenly... The cowboy rode from out the inky flat. He was dressed kindly old-fashioned with his mohair shaps and pistol. He kind of came in focus as he eyed me hard and long. Have you seen my arm? He asked me, but his lips weren't synchro-mashing. Then I noticed that this stranger had been sewed together wrong. You could almost see right through him. His anatomy was murky and his members swayed and slithered like a basket full of snakes. And I'll need a head like yours will do. His ghoulish mouth asserted. It's mine, I cried. I tried to bluff, though I dang sure had the shakes. He had a sort of evil grin, was mostly teeth and fragments. Don't argue with me, catfish bait. Tonight I'm hunting hearts. Just count yourself unlucky that I found your camp this evening, because I'm doomed to haunt this trail in search of fresh replacement parts. He was on as as lightning as his body came unraveled. I was in a limb tornado and was tanning in the eye. Arms and feet and hands and torsos, noses, toes and metatarsals flew around me like a cyclone. Had my time now come to die? I sat up a little woozy as the specter pulled together. Still unhinged, I wasn't certain what I thought I saw. I'd see. He was morphing right before me like a human biscuit rising, using dough still sticking to his bones and parts he'd got from me like the dirty look I'd given, which on him appeared quite natural. The upper lip I'd sacrificed was stiff and his to keep. He moved a little easier with the elbow room I gave him, and I'd sung a cowboy lullaby which put his leg to sleep. As he rode off, he returned to me the backward glance I gave him. I lay there really not quite sure if he was him or me. His departure left a silence, broken only by the echo of the hand that I had promised as it clapped. He turned. <laughs>
This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Thanks for listening. Looking for the ideal Christmas gift or stocking stuffer? How about a weekend pass to the 24th Annual Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 19th to 22nd, 2020. Another outstanding lineup of the finest pure Western entertainers anywhere. Canadian legend Gary Vilgar. Searching for freedom, westward the wagons. They settled in the valleys of sagebrush and pine. Tom Cole. In a big prairie moon. Rides the big prairie sky. The first Kamloops appearance for Doug Figs. A good horse under me, it's easy to see. I'm right here where I want to be. A pasture full of great cowboy poets, the BC Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, dinner shows, daytime entertainment, and a spectacular art and gear show workshop. The best place to get all the information, bccchs.com. To order tickets, call 1-888-763-2221. There's some pretty interesting items coming up on the Rangeland News and the rest of the true story about Michael Cotter and Thunder is still to come. Well, the awards just continue to pile up for Brett Kessel. Uh, he took home the uh, Country Artist of the Year Award at the Western Canadian Music Awards on October the 4th. And he took home the coveted Apple Music Fans' Choice Award for the second time in his career at the 2019 CCMA Awards, Canadian Country Music Association Awards in Calgary. And, uh, gosh, he will be performing at the Nashville Christmas Parade. I think that's on December the 7th. <laughs> and then he's back to Niagara Falls, Ontario, December 29th. And a busy, busy schedule. We've known him since he was about 12. And I really appreciate the fact that he still remembers where he comes from. I'm fifth generation On the same piece of land My grandfather's grandfather Paid just ten dollars to a government man For this little piece of heaven That I will always call home that won't ever change it runs right through my veins straight to my soul well you can put me in the city
News of the Rangeland, a roundup of news and coming events from around the West. At the top of page one, it says year-end is coming up for a lot of ranchers, and that means some time spent at the kitchen table or in the office calculating expenses and income, and so much of it comes down to cattle prices next year. Gary Crawford is with an expert, and they may have some predictions. Beef cattle producers are getting just a little higher price than had been expected. USDA adding half a dollar to its 2019 average steer price forecast, taking it to 116.06 100 weight. Acting USDA Outlook Board Chairman Mark Jekinowski told us. In, in recent months, uh, steer prices have been pretty strong. Good wholesale and, and retail demand for beef. Uh, good p- packer margins have been pulling up steer prices. However, he says there could be a little bit of pulling down in 2020 with beef production expected to increase by half a billion pounds. And so with increased supplies, we see cattle prices basically leveling off to just a slight decline. A decline from this year on average of about 56 cents a hundredweight to $115 and a half. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. Farm Fair International has begun forging a path to reinvent itself, looking to connect to more urban people to the annual livestock show. And the event that took place between November 6th and 10th at the Edmonton Expo Center saw new additions A lot of them were aimed at uh, bringing city people through the doors while also better accommodating purebred cattle producers. And there are more ideas in the works. For example, Urban Chicken Collective River City Chickens is offering a course to city hen keepers. As well, it's working with the Alberta Beekeepers Commission to put on a honey show and another new event, the Extreme Cowboy Competition, which is geared for recreational riders rather than competitive ones. And this year was looking pretty good. 1,100 cattle were exhibited, an increase from last year's figure of 920. Three cows had been spotted beachcombing on a remote barrier island on North Carolina's Outer Banks. And uh, they were swept out there to an unlikely grazing spot when Hurricane Dorian, with waves so powerful, it carried them two miles from home. And one of the bovine body surfers was seen soon after the Category 1 storm struck on the 6th of September. Now two other cows have joined her at Cape Lookout National Seashore. All are members of a wild herd of cattle that lives in marshes on an interior island known as Cedar Island, about two to three miles closer to the mainland than the Barrier Island Park. And since no one owns the cows, authorities are still deciding their fate, including whether they may continue to while away their hours on the beach, feeding off of nearby marshes. While it's unclear how the rest of the wild cattle fared, wild horses that live on nearby Shackleford Banks Island not only survived, but they thrived despite the deadly storm that ravaged the Bahamas and killed at least 50 people. Well, Tyson Fresh Meats said last week the construction and repairs to its Finney County beef complex are almost done. Tyson said it expects to resume harvest operations at the plant the first week in December with intentions to be fully operational the first week in January. The Finney County plant, with capacity of 6,000 head per day, was disrupted by a fire on August the 9th that severely damaged a critical part of the plant containing the hydraulic and electrical systems that support the harvest floor in the cooler areas and reconstruction completely replacing support beams and the roof, new hydraulic pumps and over 50,000 feet of wiring and a new electrical panel and equipment. And uh, looks like they are going to be up and running again on schedule. In the up and coming I Am Angus documentary video, Wild Arado. A forgotten town finds hope in a young cowboy and his class of high school agriculture students. Facing the odds, they become one of the first student-led cattle companies in the nation. Angus Media can't wait to share the Wild Arado Cattle Company story in the full film premieres on RFD-TV and its YouTube channel, Angus TV, on December the 26th. And you can actually sign up and uh, receive an email when the film is available online by visiting angus.org slash wildorado. I just watched the trailer, and it's fascinating. Looks like something we'd all find really worthwhile to see. Well, this year's outbreak of vesticular stomatitis virus hasn't died out completely, but it has tapered off significantly as fall weather freezes out the insect vectors associated with the disease. 
In the latest weekly report from USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, it shows the disease following a typical pattern peaking in midsummer and declining along with insect populations as the season progresses. Horses accounted for the vast majority of the 2019 cases, with occasional cases in cattle raising some concerns over the reportable disease. And uh, without proper diagnosis, clinical signs in cattle can be closely resembling those of foot and mouth disease. The next regular cattle sale at the BC Livestock Co-op's Kamloops Yards is December the 3rd. Regular cattle sale at Williams Lake on December 5th and the regular sale on Vanderhoof on December the 6th. You can get all the information and you can actually watch the sales streaming live at bclivestock.bc.ca. Meanwhile, at the Innisvale Auction Market, pre-sort calf sales on Monday, December 2nd. And uh, you can call this number to book your calves, 1-800-710-3166. Regular calf sales every Wednesday, and then there's a bread cow and heifer sale the next couple of Fridays. And the next horse sale is December 21st. You can get all the information at InnisvaleAuctionMarket.com. Okay, now we're down to the final item. And this is true, we were pulling apart the last boards from what was left of an old set of corrals on our place the other day. It was a lot of work, but it made for a pretty good bonfire when we were done, and my old crowbar was sure handy. And I commented, wow, I wonder how things were before the crowbar was invented. And Billy said without even looking up, well, I guess the crows just had to drink at home. <laughs> And that's the Rangeland News. Coming up in the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, how you can tell when a rider is a good horseman by what his horse can tell you. And the rest of the story about a horse called Thunder when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West coming up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File. How you can tell when a rider is a good horseman by what his horse can tell you. And what became of Michael Cotter and the horse called Thunder. But first, we'd like you to hear this. Here is the latest on the next Spirit of the West cruise. We are calling this The Spirit of the West Brings It Home. And as I said last week, this will be our 19th annual. And after that many years, Billy and I will be stepping back from hosting cruises after this one. So we really want to make it memorable and as uh, uncomplicated as possible. So here's how we plan to do things. Folks from Alberta, Saskatchewan and beyond and in the U.S. will probably fly to Kelowna, B.C. on July 15th. Overnighting there in a beautiful hotel and then board the coaches for a trip up to the McLennan Ranch, our little place above Kamloops. And you'll be treated to a live show with the amazing Western Spirit Band, along with special guest, Louis the Big Rig McIver, who of course gave me one of his kidneys. And after the visit to our place, the coaches will take you to beautiful Sun Peaks, where you can ride the chairlift, see the mountain wildflowers, and see the place where cattle still graze and have done so in the summers for over 100 years. After overnighting there, the coaches head to Vancouver. You overnight then, and in the next morning, board the beautiful Holland America Coningsdam for a seven-day trip up the Inside Passage to Alaska and back. You don't fly back, you ride the ship back. And we'll have lots of special events for our cruise group, including one of our favorite trips, the White Pass Railroad. We sure hope you can join Billy and I on our farewell cruise. And for all the information, you can see the cruise page at q-mclennan.com and call 1-800-530-0131. Now it's time for the Horse Training File, brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store. Okay, you know that Irvine's is all about Western Wear with a welcome twist, but Irvine Tack and Western Wear is also famous for their home decor with a Western twist. Beautiful rustic dining room and kitchen tables, wooden chests and drawers, bedroom furniture, wall decor, and more. So stop in soon, take your time, and explore Irvine's Western home decor. Something special for every room and every nook and cranny. 
Exit 305 off Highway 2 by Crossfield. Canada's largest western... A few of the good hands I've been lucky enough to ride with over the years, uh, now with more serious than earlier, say by the time I get what it takes to be a real good rider figured out, I'm too old to do it. (laughs) I can sure identify with that. But a lot of savvy older hands get along well with horses even after their reflexes and their muscle tone has deteriorated a little. In recent years, I find myself paying closer attention to the riders in a group, watching how their horses work and being able to see what the riders do to get such great results. And I think a lot of it comes down to feel, timing, and balance. I've seen a horse get confused when things speed up, and often it's because the rider's mind has gone ahead to the cow that broke out and he forgot to take his horse with him. Now, I've seen riders try to make a quick move when the horse's left front foot, for example, needs to take a big step to the left, and the rider yanks that way with the reins while the horse still has his weight on that foot. I've seen a lot of wasted motion and energy when the rider's eyes and attention are on the place and the horse's mind is somewhere else entirely. Even the best of hands will get it wrong once in a while, but their horses are forgiving and they are seasoned enough that you can be sure they'll get it right next time. Whether it's sorting in a corral or gathering a bunch in the open, knowing where your horse's mind is all the time is pretty important. I remember being with a group of good hands, bringing heavy steers out of a bunch into the pen, or pushing them into another pen. There were two steers standing at the edge of the group, almost in the right position to be brought out. The rider was watching a black baldy on his right intently, not realizing that his horse had his eyes on a red steer to his left. And as the rider leaned a bit to his right to check out the black baldy, the red steer on the left broke out of the bunch, and old Sorrel wheeled immediately to cut him off, and the rider was hung away out to the right. He grabbed the horn and recovered, pulled himself back into the saddle, but the steer got away, and he pulled a groin, and he couldn't ride for a couple of weeks. Even when the day's been long, and the weather's bad, and the riders and horses are tired, I really admire the top hands that uh, take all the time it takes, at that point even, and elevate cattle handling on horseback to an art form. And for Urban Saddles and Western Wear, that's this week's horse training file. Our horses sure are doing well on their daily feeding of Hoffman's Horse Ration. You can find out all about it at Hoffman's Horseration.com. Looking for the ideal Christmas gift or stocking stuffer? How about a weekend pass to the 24th annual Kamloops Cowboy Festival, March 19th to 22nd, 2020? Another outstanding lineup of the finest pure Western entertainers anywhere. Canadian legend Gary Velgar. Searching for freedom, westward the wagons, they settled in the valleys. Of sagebrush and pine Tom Cole In a big prairie moon Rides a big prairie sky The first Kamloops appearance for Doug Figs A good horse under me It's easy to see I'm right here where I want to be Past year full of great cowboy poets, the BC Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions, dinner shows, daytime entertainment, and a spectacular art and gear show workshop. The best place to get all the information, bccchs.com. To order tickets, call 1 888 763 2221. Michael Johnson will continue the story of Thunder, the horse that would not stand ground time. After a tribute to another good horse, her name was Cinnamon. Here's Butch Falk. I know she may not look like much, this mare's getting old But I'll feed her till the day she dies, cause Cinny can't be sold I broke her into Saddleback when I was 23 Took my time and did it right, she was for my bride to be She wasn't just a lady's horse, she always earned her keep Chasing cows in the July sun or December belly deep A little horse with lots of heart, the kind that never quits She'd work her way through a wreck and never throw a fit Yeah. 
blizzard up on Dead Man's Creek, she damn sure saved my hide. And as the mare got on in years, she taught my kids to ride. On a working ranch, there is no place for pets, we've all been told. This old mare has earned her rest in sin, he can't be sold. She wasn't just a lady's horse, she always earned her keep. Chasing cows in the July sun or December belly deep. A little horse with lots of heart, the kind that never quits. She'd work her way through the wreck and never throw a fit. On a working ranch there is no place for pets we've all been told. This old mare has earned her rest and sin he can't be sold. Back to the story. Michael Cotter had finally located the newborn calf in a blizzard at the bottom of a deep ravine. And the horse he was riding was as good as they come except for one small detail. And Dr. Michael Johnson now picks up the story. The second problem was even worse. He was riding a horse that wouldn't stay ground tied, and there was nothing to tie him to out on this open range. Michael knew what he had to do. Some would laugh and call him a fool. I am not one of those. Michael dismounted from thunder and whispered in his ear, I have to go down in that ravine, son, and one time in your life, thunder, just one time in your life, you have to stand by me. Don't run. Stand by me. And with that, a young farm boy turned his back on a Mustang, born to run, and walked down into an icy arroyo to save a life while risking his own. At the bottom of the depression, icy water filling his boots, Michael cradled the baby and began his ascent up the steep hill. He peered through the snow, and thunder was gone. But wait, it's not over. The final chapter, when the spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the spirit of the West. The fine cowboy poet from Decker, Montana, Jim Hamilton, is going to be at the 2019 Kamloops Cowboy Festival, and he's standing by on the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight this week, and, uh, oh, what's that? It could be that you're wondering about Michael Cotter and Thunder. Well, he'd found the newborn calf, and he knew his horse Thunder had never, ever stood ground-tied with the reins dropped on the ground. He'd always hit the trail for home. The blizzard was raging, but he had no choice. There was nothing to tie to, so he dropped the reins on the ground and told Thunder if he ever waited for him in his life, this was the time. And Dr. Michael Johnson picks up the story now, as Michael Cotter struggled up the bank with the newborn calf. He peered through the snow, and Thunder was gone. His hopes fell again as he desperately weighed his non-existent options. The wind stopped for just a moment, Flakes flakes ceased their swirling, and there stood old Thunder, nervously pawing the ground. Not too happy about the whole thing, but at least he was still standing. One time in his life, old Thunder stayed ground-tied. He stood by his friend in his time of need. Michael cautiously approached the pony and gently grasped the rein, the lifeline that would take them all to the warmth and safety of the barn, a thousand acres away. The baby lost her ears due to frostbite, but grew to be a fine cow on the farm. The mama lived for several years and had more babies, and Michael, although bitterly cold, was fine because old Thunder brought them all home. Why did he stand there that one time? Was it because he remembered a family that had been kind to him? Did an angel wrangler whisper in his ear, Stand by your friend this one time? I don't know. I like to think it was both. All I know is, I'm glad that horse stayed by him. That black Mustang saved the life of one of the finest men I've ever known. Like Michael's dad said, a little sweet feed and good care can do wonders for all sorts of God's creatures. Thank you, Thunder. There's nothing 
like a good one between your knees light to the rain and willing to please together as one the day will be done on a good one I'll find my way home the world looks better from up on a throne strapped to the top side of muscle and bone below me a friend on whom I depend on a good one I'll find my is fickle and the days are long danger is quick and the cattle are strong but buried in movement purpose and song on a good one I'll find my way home circle around And the trail is ended on this earthly plane Just send me away on a big honest bay On a good one I'll find my way home On a good one I'll find my way home Isn't that a great song? That's Wiley Gustafson, Wiley in the Wild West. When I had a look at the preliminary lineup for the 2020 Kamloops Cowboy Festival next March, I was sure glad to see that Montana rancher and fine reciter Jim Hamilton's name was there. Now, this is an example of what you'll hear when he's on stage. Now, here's a poem about a man who actually got old enough to attend his 50th high school class reunion. The old rancher studied the invitation, class reunion, 50 years. He thinks, I believe that I'll go, because despite 68 years, there's a girl he remembers from those years with few cares, a gal with laughing brown eyes and pretty soft auburn hair. Oh, they hadn't been real serious, but in ways they had too. They talked to the future, but neither knew what to do. Then life intervened, as it does now and then, and they'd not heard of each other these 40 years and 10. But he'd married and succeeded at ranching and all, and raised a family and done well by anyone's call. But every now and again, though he really didn't care, but he'd think of that girl with the soft auburn hair. But now his wife's passed away, the children all grown, and it's lonesome as heck on that ranch all alone, So he goes to reunion, just with the thought in his mind of just visiting old friends, but just maybe he'd find the girl he'd called Joni. It was just her nickname. Just maybe life might have served her the same. Well, he visits with friends, some from near and some far, finally inquires about Joni, learns she's there at the bar. He recognizes his old girl, though that auburn sure gray, He says, Joni, it's awful nice seeing you here today. But when she turns to speak, he sees something's wrong. His dreams turn a nightmare like a bad country song. With eyes glazed from drinking and false teeth that don't fit, she says, cowboy, you look familiar, but don't bother to sit. Men's company I don't need. I've had all I can stand. Four husbands, ten children, none of them planned. 
Three fellers divorced me. One just disappeared. Oh, I never was wild, but a little high-geared. Now I take Nexium for ulcers. And my eyesight's out of whack. I load up on aspirin, because I'm always down in the back. Hormones for the hot flashes, but they don't make me frisky. My medicine of choice is this Jack Daniels whiskey. So don't hang around me. I remember you now. You're that kid from ag class who just talked about cows. But you can buy me a drink, cowboy, then you can go. But when you're talking, speak up, because my hearing aid's low. So he buys her the drink and considers it money well spent. And he thinks, but for the grace of God there, I could have went. Then he jerks wide awake, about ready to scream. He realizes this whole nightmare thing was a dream. At the real reunion, Joni's not there, but he learns she's done well. Somehow he feels better, more than he ever can tell. So folks, remember this lesson that I've attempted to tell. Don't try turning back the clock, cause that seldom works well. We should have some good years yet, but folks, use them with care. And don't go to reunion, hoping your old flame will be there. Well, thank you so much for making the ride again this week. And as always, thanks to the Spirit of the West support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan. And if you are looking for tractor parts, any make, any year, see Mark's page, bctractorparts.com. And there's some valuable information, a great article on cattle handling, moving cow-calf pairs, written by Dylan Biggs in the latest issue of Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. You can subscribe online at cowboymagazine.com. And I uh, hope you can have a look at the YouTube version of this program or get it as a podcast and uh, download it and take it with you. The links to do that can be found at our website, u-mclennan.com. And uh, all of our past programs are available there on YouTube and Facebook. Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. <laughs>